Hi, I'm Maggie Doyle, and I'm here today with Aaron Chavez as Academic Program Consultants for the Kentucky Department of Education to share with you a new resource we're releasing called Integrating Social, Emotional, and Academic Development within the Kentucky Academic Standards for Mathematics. So let's dig right in. We want to use our time today to show you why is this resource so needed, what is included in each grade level resource, and how it's going to have an impact on your school community. And that's twofold. How is it going to influence educators and support them? And how is it going to be reflected in student experiences? So let's dig right in and Erin is going to share with us why this resource is so needed, especially right now, but always. Thanks, Max. So it's designed for educators to utilize when they're planning instruction for all learners. And just to back this up, research shows that when we integrate um, social emotional learning competencies with academic um, development, specifically mathematics in this resource. It promotes an academic climate conducive to learning and it supports individual students um, in striving towards a collective goal of achieving a more equitable society. And so we previously released um, a standards newsletter on social, emotional and academic development go hand in hand. And therefore um, we created this resource that focuses on highlighting the social, emotional learning with the standards for mathematical um, content and practices. So let's look at what this resource includes. So each grade level resource is going to start with more broad connections. So this first bullet connections between um, the SEL competencies from the Collaborative for Academic, Social and Emotional Learning or CASEL and the expectations within the mathematics um, standards. So specifically those standards for mathematical practice. So this is really going to be K-12 and then we're going to narrow our focus in each grade level resource to give you design considerations for what each of those competencies might look like at that grade level. We're going to provide questions for teacher self-reflection and the questions that teachers can use with students. So let's look first at that broad piece, and then I'm gonna turn it over to Erin to show you some grade level um, examples. So this is CASEL's SEL framework. So one of the things that it's important to note is how all of these things work together, and they're supported by classrooms, schools, families and caregivers and communities. So this really works within the broader um, spectrum of where our students are learning. Um, notice that color coding, so self-awareness, for example, is um, in orange along with self-management, and that's going to be reflected in our resource as well. So we understand that this is going to be um, new learning for some, um, and some might be more well-versed in it, but we wanted to draw those connections as much as we could um, just, to, just to support that and make sure that everyone is um, kind of clarifying how to use the resources and how that's supported. So if you look at examples of self-awareness in the bullets, it says one of those is having a growth mindset. And I think that if you talk to a lot of mathematics educators, they're like, we do that. We want that. We want that for our students. We want them to approach mathematics with a growth mindset. So there are these really natural connections. So within each grade level packet, we really start with making those broad K-12 connections between our standards for mathematical practice which are in the Kentucky Academic Standards for Mathematics and those five social emotional competencies. And we built off work from the Dana Center to do that. So each grade level packet starts with that overview. Here's the mathematical practice. Here's how we can intentionally integrate those um, SEL competencies. And then once we've highlighted K-12, we dig in a little deeper within grade level content. And Erin's going to show us what that looks like. Perfect. Thanks, Max. So section two, just like Maggie talked about, um, really digs into the design considerations for each grade level. Um, so you can see this is a kindergarten example. Um, standards for mathematical practices up at the top, just like in the cast for mathematics. Then it highlights the competency um, and then what those characteristics look like. And then it gives some um, design considerations on um, when designing mathematics instruction, what it looks like in the classroom to foster self-awareness. Um, there's connections to the standards for mathematical practices as well as hyperlinked to the actual standards document um, within the content standards.
Section three um, really dives into self reflection questions as teachers are thinking about how to implement and to. Um, uh, to go ahead and, and think about those design considerations. And so as you notice, there is a plethora of um, self reflection questions um, on the screen of, um, on self awareness. Um, you know, maybe you're with a teammate or in a PLC. Um, you don't want to tackle all of those self reflection questions. You might just want to pick a few and um, actually we'll dig into um, a little bit later a resource that helps you think about a process um, when utilizing this resource. And the last component within um, each grade level um, competency. So you've got those design considerations, you've got teacher self reflection questions, and then there are questions for students. So one of the best things about this component is that they're immediately actionable. I could take these questions and be really intentional about using them with my students in my next lesson if I wanted to. So they are student friendly, they are ready to be used, and they'll also help students develop that. For example, self awareness. Where did my mistake occur and how do I know? Um, and really um, support students in kind of processing those competencies as well. So each grade level, kindergarten through high school, has those four sections, that broad K-12 overview that connects the competencies with the practices, and then um, the design considerations, the teacher self-reflection questions, the student questions, and those are available for every competency. So we aren't going to dig into each one, but we just wanted to show you that's available for self-awareness is the one Aaron took you through, self-management, social awareness, relationship skills, and responsible decision making. So I'm sure that as you dig into the resource, you're going to see some of those bullets and you're going to think, we do that in mathematics and so this is really just um, a support to to think about how we approach that instructionally now and to consider how we might want to shift that moving forward um, if we want to shift that moving forward so that's really important so we have talked about why the resource is needed we've talked to you about what it includes and now let's talk about how it's going to support your school community and first let's talk about teachers so one of the ways that this is going to support your educators is that it's going to support continuous improvement. So again, we know that there might be varying levels of familiarity with the social emotional competencies across the state. So this is potentially going to be some new learning. Um, and it's going to be some new learning that comes with the question of is there um, a way that I can apply this new learning in my classroom? So we really think it supports continuous improvement and we don't envision educators um, improving alone. So we really think it supports educator collaboration as well. So as Erin mentioned before, she might not want to tackle one of those questions on her own and she might want to team up with a partner. We think that's great. <laughs> and so we think that this is all about coming together with a group of educators and taking stock of what is currently happening in your classrooms and considering um, steps that you might take to move it forward. And the collaborative nature of that is so important because we really want any progress to be meaningful, but manageable. And so um, making those decisions together is really important. And it's also going to support educators in building classroom culture. So within the PLC process, if you are seeing results that um, indicate that there is potentially a disconnect between what the data is showing from your students and um, the intended learning goals, then maybe this is something that we come back to and we talk we talk about how um, we really want to take a hard look at classroom culture and ways that we can support our students in that manner and see if that makes the difference that we're hoping to see in our data. So we really think that this is going to be valuable for teachers. And I'm going to let Erin, as she has some students, talk about why this is so important for students. Thanks, Max, because we definitely highlight responsible decision making in this household. Um, so again, how is it going to be reflected in students' experiences? Well, you know, the instruction is going to be designed because it helps deepen the mathematics um, at grade level, not only the content standards, but the standards for mathematical practices. 
as well as it makes that connection to the um, castle's um, competencies um, for social and emotional learning. For example, self-awareness, self-management, social awareness, relationship skills, and responsible decision-making. And so um, just to dive in a little bit deeper on how to process this and how to think about um, reflection as you're designing instruction, Mags is gonna take you um, to a resource to help support this resource. So a lot of what this is going to look like with students really depends on what that teacher self-reflection looks like. So we do have an accompanying reflection sheet and you'll notice that page one of that reflection sheet really mirrors the resource itself and that was very intentional. So as educators are engaging with the resource, this is a place for them to do that self-reflection, to um, prioritize next steps. So um, maybe we don't approach all of the questions. Maybe we use a rule of one third and together with our team, we kind of pick out three or four that that we really think um, our students um, would benefit from. So this is a reflection sheet that will really help you do that. And there is a reflection sheet. There are pages for each of the competencies. We also recognize that um, facilitating learning and discussion around this resource might um, be different than what our typical, you know, math meeting might look like. So we just wanted to provide some considerations for facilitating this material um, and how to kind of design those discussions and and how to give everyone an opportunity to check into the session. And and if this is new learning, what might be some strategies that I can use with my team to help support them as they process that? What might be some strategies that we can use to prioritize next steps? So um, this is more of an informal um, facilitator resource just with some ideas um, that facilitators may use but may choose not to. Um, and that's really up to you all at a local level. All right, so five things to know before you go. Um, please make sure that you have subscribed to kystandards.org um, as if you have, then you will be um, updated on new resources that are released. Um, Additional SMP resources, for example, like engaging the SMPs looks look fors and question stems that we actually utilized in creation of this document. Um, there's a sample match task matchup for each grade level um, within the getting to know the cast for mathematics module. Um, also, uh, we recently released all sections of the building a culture of math learning modules um, and those are available by grade band. And then a couple of our favorites, um, a family's guide to understanding student assessment and standards family guides. Um, and those just offer questions for um, students, for parents, and then also for um, parents to ask of their teachers, um, of their students, kiddos, teachers. So if you have any other questions, please feel free to reach out. Um, and then you can contact kdmathateducation.ky.gov. Thank you.